What did I get married for? On a day two years ago, I was certainly happy. I thought I would spend the rest of my life with the person I loved, taking vows of love. And yet now, I just work as a housekeeper in my in-laws house. How did this happen? I just wanted a simple married life. But now I want to leave this house. I've thought that many times. But when it comes down to it, I freeze up and can't take that last step. Is this going to be my life forever? Just when I was starting to give up, a glimmer of hope saved me. My name is Brandy. I am 33 years old. I got married to my husband Hank two years ago, and we originally worked at the same company. We dated for three years before getting married. I quit my job and became a housewife when we registered our marriage. Things were good up until we entered our newlywed life, when my father-in-law suddenly passed away. Up until then, my father-in-law, mother-in-law, and sister-in-law all lived together. It seems that my father-in-law was the breadwinner of the family. At the time, my mother-in-law was a housewife, and my sister-in-law was a university student. The inheritance that my father-in-law left behind was not a significant amount, and it was consumed by my sister-in-law's tuition fee. In the midst of all that, my mother-in-law contacted my husband. Hank, please come back to our house. Please help us. Huh? At first, my husband refused to help. Even if you ask for help, I have a life with Brandy too. Of course, I understand that. I want to make you and Brandy feel uncomfortable. So please come back to our house. No, but please, Hank. There is no one else we can rely on. Over the phone, my mother-in-law begged and cried. I, who was listening to the conversation next to him, felt a mix of emotions. It seems. That my mother-in-law has been a housewife for her whole married life. Even if she says she wants to start working now, it's not easy to find a job immediately. So my husband proposed to give her money, but she refused. Money? You don't have to do that. Just come back to our house. Then you won't have to pay rent either, right? That's true, but. We just got married. It's okay. Brandy and I get along well. I won't make things difficult for Brandy. Well, I don't know. Please ask Brandy herself about this. She will surely understand my request. I think my mother-in-law knew from the beginning that I wouldn't be able to refuse her. Yes. There was no way I, who had just gotten married, could muster the courage to reject her proposal to live together. My husband gave me a week's grace period, and I thought about it over and over again in my own way. But no matter how much I thought about it, I couldn't come to the conclusion of refusing to live together. Of course, I wanted to enjoy my newly wed life with my husband. But if I were to reject my mother-in-law's proposal here and now, it was clear that our relationship with my husband's family would deteriorate in the future. We must get along well with his family from now. Therefore, I couldn't afford to be disliked by my mother-in-law and sister-in-law. After much consideration, I decided to live together. My husband worried about me until the end. But I insisted that everything would be okay, and we moved to my in-laws' house. On the day of the move, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law welcomed me with open arms. Welcome, Brandy. Good to see you. I'm excited to have you here. Thank you, both of you. If we live with my in-laws, we won't have to pay rent, so my husband's take-home pay should be enough to support everybody. My mother-in-law said she will look for work, 
and if things are still tough, I can go back to work. That's what I thought. But at that time, I still hadn't realized the real reason why my mother-in-law had proposed that we live together. I didn't figure it out until two weeks after we moved in. My husband was still as busy as ever with work, and not returning until after nine at night. That had become his daily routine. I woke up at 5:30 every morning to see him off and make breakfast for everyone. On that day, as I was having breakfast alone after seeing off my husband, I heard a loud voice calling me. When I looked in the direction of the voice, my mother-in-law had just entered the room. Oh, good morning! Without waiting for me to greet her, she interrupted me and raised her voice in anger. Wait a minute! Just what do you think you are doing? I just finished seeing off Hank and was about to have breakfast. I can't believe it! You going to eat before me, or Lucy? Huh? But I have to go to the city hall after this. I don't care about that. How dare you be so rude as to eat before the people of this household? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. As my mother-in-law starts to get angry, my head becomes muddled. I don't understand why she is so upset. Perhaps hearing her voice, my sister-in-law Lucy comes down from the second floor. Realizing that I am being scolded by my mother-in-law, she laughs at me. Oh no, Brandy got mom pissed. But it's really your fault, Brandy, because you are not very good at handling things. What? What did I do? Was so wrong? I've been living with you for the past two weeks. And I've realized that you are the type of person who makes us irritated. What? I wonder why I have to be told such things. From that day on, my life became a living hell. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law teamed up to mock and criticize me. Brandy, make sure you clean and do all the laundry. Mom and I are going out. So make sure you work properly, Mrs. Housekeeper. Okay. Housekeeper? I'm not living here just to do housework. Huh? Then why are you here for? So shameless. No wonder my brother had such poor taste. Wait. Please, at least do your own laundry. You are so annoying. We're letting you live in this house. Don't complain. That's right. If you dare to go against us, we will tell my brother to divorce you. But this, they no longer consider me as part of their family. I managed to endure it for the first few months, but I can't take it anymore. One day, when my husband came from work, I opened up to him about my feelings. Hey, Hank. Sorry to bother you. Even though you're tired, can I talk to you for a sec? Sure. What's up? Well, it's about your mom and sister. They've been pushing all their household chores onto me, and it's been quite tough. I see. They've been making you do all the housework. I nodded slightly to my husband's question, but I couldn't tell him everything that had been happening to me. As I had only been able to convey the bare minimum of the harassment I had received from them, you know, even though I'm your wife, I'm still an outsider, right? So I was hoping you could indirectly let them know that it's becoming too much for me to handle. I understand. I'm sorry. I had no idea things had gotten this bad. It's okay. Also. Is it okay if I get a part-time job during the day too? Why the sudden change? Well, I don't know. I just feel like I want to get out of the house a bit during the day. If that's what you want, go for it. Thank you, Han. 
I had been vague with my husband, but the reality was different. The more I stayed in this house, the more trouble my mother-in-law and sister-in-law piled on me. I started to feel like I didn't want to be at home as much as possible. So I quickly found a job and started working at a bakery from the following month. While my time at home had certainly decreased, but bullying from my in-laws had not stopped. In fact, it might have gotten worse with my increased absence. In addition, my husband's admonishment only made his mother and sister angrier. This lifestyle had entered its second year, and their treatment of me was, was getting worse day by day. My mother-in-law had said she was looking for a job, but she made excuses saying that she had failed her interview. However, she had not even gone to the interview in the first place. My sister-in-law had graduated from college, but she was only working part-time to earn her own pocket money. My husband had warned them several times, but each time they would apologize and promise to find jobs. But it never materialized. I had enough of this kind of life. If you say that much, then you should leave, one might think. But I couldn't. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law would change their attitude in front of my husband. And I couldn't obtain my clear evidence of their bullying. Then one day, while I was doing my usual housework, I heard my mother-in-law and sister-in-law arguing. It seemed they had made plans to go out, but both claimed they had no money. I thought it was stupid. But my mother-in-law called out to me. Hey, you, worthless daughter-in-law, come here. We're going out now, but we don't have any money. Can you lend us some? I'm sorry, but it's tough for me too, before payday. What? Why are you refusing? You don't have the right to refuse, you know. Even if you say that, just give me the money already. My mother-in-law grabbed me and took my wallet out of the pocket of my apron. I had been carrying my wallet in my apron since she had taken it out of my bag without permission before. Hey, please, stop it! When I reached out to take back my wallet, my mother-in-law slapped my hand away. Then, looking at the contents of my wallet, my mother-in-law opened her mouth in disbelief. What is this? There's hardly anything in here. Look at this. There's only $30 in the wallet. What? Seriously? You work. And yet, there's only this much in your wallet? That's really bad. You're really useless. It's frustrating just watching you. And now you can't even contribute anything. Yeah, seriously. You were terrible at housework too. You were just a worthless bitch. <laughs> the laughter of the two echoed in the room, and my self-esteem continued plummet. Then my mother-in-law made an unexpected comment. If she's just going to make us irritated like this, why don't we just ask her to leave? Uh, that's a good idea. She's a nuisance anyway. If you think that getting rid of this bitch will make our life easier. You're genius, mom. And since her living expenses are now saved, we can use the extra money ourselves. It seems that they think of me as nothing more than a servant and a source of money. I had had enough of their attitude and behavior. If you're going to have that kind of attitude, then I won't hesitate to take action against you. I regained my composure and clearly told them what I thought. Oh yeah? Is it really okay that I leave? Of course. Please leave as soon as possible. Yeah. Your presence is just a nuisance. But only if you have somewhere to go, though. 
I see. Thank you very much. Goodbye then. I quickly headed to my room and packed my things. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law seemed a bit puzzled by my swift action, but I ignored them and left the house. I went to a hotel near my husband's office. I contacted him and waited for him to finish work. Several hours later, my husband finished work, and we met up. But he seemed understandably bewildered. Brady, hey, why are you here? I finally confessed everything to my husband when he asked me about it. Honey, I'm sorry for not telling you this before, but actually, I've been bullied by your mother all this time. What? You mean my mom? Not only your mom, Lucy does it too. At first, it was just pushing me to do more housework. But recently, the verbal abuse has increased, and they've even started demanding money. Th that can't be true. No matter how much my husband loves me, he is still blood related to his family, including his mother and sister. It's understandable that he can't believe what I said without any evidence. It's difficult to ask him to believe me. So I took out the divorce papers that I had prepared in advance and showed them to him. He looked like he was about to cry and tore up the divorce papers. But Hank, why? I'm sorry, Brandy. I didn't notice that you were suffering so much. Why are you apologizing, Hank? Brandy, I know you are not the kind of person who, who would tell lies like that. But I have no proof. I understand you better than anyone else. When he told me that, tears flowed from my eyes. My husband gently embraced me as I cried like a child. He believed me, his wife, instead of his mother and sister. That alone was enough to make me feel relieved. The next day, my husband and I returned to my in-laws' house. When my mother-in-law saw my face, she furrowed her brow, but quickly put on a facade in front of my husband. Brandy, where did you go? I was worried about you. The mother-in-law told a blatant lie. Hank went straight to his room and began packing his luggage. Then he said to his mother and sister, "Brandy and I are leaving this house. You can do whatever you want." What? What are you saying, Hank? That's right, Hank. What happened all of a sudden? How can you be so calm about it? Brandy was hurt so badly because of you guys. What? What are you talking about? We didn't do anything, right, dear? Yeah, Hank. You're not seriously believing what that woman says, are you? We didn't do anything. My sister-in-law even covered her face with both hands and pretended to cry. But such actions had no effect on Hank. He raised his voice and said to the two of them, "Don't be ridiculous. Cut it out already." Do you even understand how Brandy felt all this time? Of course, I'm also at fault for not noticing it until now. But the biggest responsibility lies with you guys. I've turned a blind eye to the fact that you didn't work until now. But I've had enough. We're leaving. Wait, Hank. What will happen to us if you leave now? Yeah. Wait. What about our lives? How should I know? You guys have been making us work, while you just did whatever you wanted. On top of that, you've been bullying my wife. How rotten can you be? Aren't you ashamed in front of our dead father? Let me tell you, I don't consider you guys as my family anymore. From now on, Brandy and I will live happily together. Don't you dare interfere. Got it? My husband gently smiled and took my hand, and we started to leave the living room. Then the mother-in-law shouted, "Wait!" 
My mother-in-law and sister-in-law look at me with, with tears in their eyes. They must be hoping to get my forgiveness here, so that they can get my husband's forgiveness as well. Brandy, I'm so sorry. Staring at the mother-in-law as she says this, I firmly respond. That's enough of that kind of talk. There's nothing you can say now that will make me forgive you. Please don't say that. We won't do anything anymore. I can't believe that. For the past two years, I've been living a life like hell. Now that I'm finally free, you want me to fall back into that hell again? I won't waste any more of my life on a loser like you. I turned my back on them and started walking. My husband walked with me, matching his stride to mine, and I felt like crying. After that, the two were forced to live a difficult life. Even though they owned the house and didn't have to pay rent, they still had to pay for utilities, food, property tax, and so on. There was no way they could cover those expenses, which just my sister in those part-time job. So my mother-in-law ended up starting a part-time job as well. However, since she had no work experience, she could only find jobs with low wages and major allowances. As a result, they were no longer able to enjoy the luxurious they used to have, and they became quite worn out. My husband still receives regular requests for them for help from those two. But he ignores all of their messages without pampering them in the slightest. I wonder if they will ever come to understand their own situation someday. Well, it's no longer my concern. On the other hand, we are currently in the midst of looking for a new house. We are searching for a good place that is halfway between my husband's company and my part-time job. I am grateful to my husband who believed in my words at that time. I want to spend my life with him forever. Why do you always make me so annoyed? I didn't mean to. I have had enough of being talked down by my daughter-in-law. My mother-in-law said with a disdainful look. There was no response to her satin words, but I remained it calm. I'm sick of being tied down to this house. I'll leave as you wish. My mother-in-law still didn't know what would happen to this house when I leave. My name is Beth, 36 years old. I've been married to my husband Alex for three years. We have a great relationship, but that was until two years ago. On that day, my life changed when I received a phone call from my husband in the middle of a cold winter day. I run an online shop and work from home. So I was at home working when my husband called me. Beth, it's an emergency. My dad. Your dad? What happened? Mom called me and said dad collapsed. He's been transported by ambulance now. What? Your father was transported? I'm heading to the hospital. Can you come right away too? I took note of the hospital name and hurried to the designated hospital by taxi from the nearest station. But it was already too late. My father-in-law had already passed away when I arrived. I couldn't believe it. My husband and mother-in-law were already in the room with my mother-in-law crying and covering her husband's body while my husband gently stroked her shoulder. Then my mother-in-law turned to me. Beth, I need to talk to my son. Can you give us some time alone? Oh sure, I understand. As instructed by my mother-in-law, I quietly left the room. A few minutes later, my husband came to me and we went back home for the time being. On the way back, Memories of my father-in-law flooded my mind, and tears began to well up. A few days later, we held the wake and funeral and were able to say goodbye to my father-in-law. 
That night, after the funeral, my husband dropped a bombshell. Hey, I didn't tell you, but we are moving at the end of this month. What? Moving? What are you talking about all of a sudden? Sorry for the sudden news, but it's already decided. Took out a beer from the fridge and started it drinking without explaining anything to me. I couldn't understand it, and my thoughts momentarily stopped. What do you mean by moving? I haven't heard anything about it. At the end of this month? It's too sudden, isn't it? My husband hasn't mentioned anything important yet. I asked him about the thing that worries me the most. Hey, where are we moving to? Oh, to my parents' house. Huh? To your parents' house? Why? It's obvious, isn't it? It's because my mom will be all alone. Your mom? Does that have to do with the conversation you had in the hospital the other day? Oh yeah, mom asked me to live with her because she feels lonely living alone. You agreed just because she asked you to? Yeah, why not? I couldn't even sigh at my husband's easy acceptance. Even so, I couldn't forgive him for making the decision on his own. So I let out my feelings. Why didn't you consult with me even a bit about it? Moving all of a sudden is a troublesome. Oh, why would you be troubled? You're like a full-time housewife, aren't you? What are you talking about? You know that I work from home, right? But that's at home, right? There's no need to commute. And as long as you have internet access, you can work anywhere, right? It doesn't matter where we move. That's not the point. Anyway, it's already been decided. Mom is worried, so please start packing for the end of the month. My husband turned on the TV and deliberately turned up the volume to d to drown to drown out my voice. Angered by his behavior, I went to bed in silence. From the next day on. My husband began to say this every day. Make sure to pack everything in time. Put my things in clearly marked boxes. You're usually at home, so you have time, right? It might be easier than being a working office employee, but recently my work has been busy, and there have been a lot of inquiries due to increased sales. I have to handle everything by myself. So I inevitably run out of time. However, no matter how much I explain, my husband never understands. In the end, I had to sacrifice my sleep time and do both work and packing at the same time. As planned, we moved out at the end of the month, and our life in my in-laws house began. It was much more difficult than I thought. Both physically and mentally, basically all the housework was left to me. Even when I suggested dividing the work to my mother-in-law, she wouldn't accept it. Moreover, she joined in with her son and blamed me. Beth, since you're at home, you should be doing the household chores. That's right, Beth. You are, after all, a wife of this family. But I have work to do as well. You're just messing around on your computer, right? You have plenty of free time, so manage your time well. Oh, is it that Beth takes too much time for one household chore? It's not like that. Then you should be able to do it. Make sure you don't cause any trouble for Mom. I will educate her to take care of the house as a wife should. Since that day. My available work hours have drastically decreased. If I don't finish the household chores, my mother-in-law will come to my room without even knocking and complain, and she won't even try to hide her bad mood as she tells me, "Beth, the laundry isn't finished yet." Huh? But I finished hanging it all just now. 
It's not finished. The towel that I put in the washer earlier are still in the basket. You put them in after I started the washer, right? I was planning to wash those tomorrow. Don't talk back to me. Just do as I say. My mother in law started to yell at me. Until I do as she says, her verbal abuse continues. I reluctantly interrupted my work and started the washer again as she ordered. Days like this continued for a month. Even I, who have a lot of patience, was nearing my limit. One day, I confided in my husband about his mother. While we were lying in the bed before going to sleep, I brought it up casually. Hey, Alex, I have a favor to ask you. A favor? What is it? Could you tell your mom not to come into my room while I'm working? She comes in every day without knocking, and it's really distracting me from my work. Why are you telling me? Why don't you just tell mom directly? I've told her many times, but she doesn't listen to me at all. Then my husband let out a big sigh and responded weirdly Do you know why my mom goes to your room? What? Because you were doing something wrong. It's because you were not doing your share of the housework. Wait a minute. I'm not neglecting my housework. Mom told me. You forgot to wash the towel the other day, right? And you don't cook the food the way mom told you to do. Why are you so bad at this? My husband, who was supposed to be on my only ally, took his mother's side completely. Faced with this harsh reality, I couldn't say anything more. By consulting my husband, the situation with my mother in law became even more difficult the next day. Alex's stress at work also increased, and he was always in bad mood at home. Then, one day, my husband came home from work later than usual. His face was red, and even from the distance, I could smell alcohol. Hey, Alex, how much did you drink? Shut up. I got fired from work, and I'm irritated. You got fired? What happened? Those guys fired me for such a small mistake. Damn it. He said it was just a small mistake. But it couldn't have been such a small mistake to get him fired. However, my husband didn't reflect on himself at all and didn't even acknowledge his own mistakes. I tried to leave the living room, leaving my drinking husband behind. Hey! He stopped me and said, What? From now on, we have to manage our finances with your income until I find my new job. What? Wait a minute. I've been contributing $1,500 until now. Starting next month, it'll be $3,000. I sell your online banking. You earn more than that, right? Did you check it without my permission? We're a married couple. It's not a problem, right? Anyway, make sure to put $3,000 in the household budget. If you don't like it, we'll get a divorce. He took out the divorce papers from his bag and threw them at me. Looking back, I should have decided to get divorced right away. At the time, I was just bewildered by the fact that my husband had been fired. In addition, at his command, I had to keep the news of his dismissal from his mother. To avoid suspicion from her, he pretended to wear a suit and went to work every morning. How long will this life continue? I can't even save any money like this. I had always wanted to start my own business and even wanted to have a physical store. So, I had been saving my money, though it was not much. I hoped my husband would find a new job soon. I managed to endure this life somehow. But more than a half a year has passed since then. 
and he still hasn't found a new job. He started working part time a few months ago, but he doesn't support our household budget. Despite this situation, my mother-in-law still hurls insults at me. Due to the stress of my husband being fired, I ended up arguing with her one day. If you have so many complaints, why don't you do everything yourself? What, Beth? Why are you acting that way toward your mother-in-law? I am busy with work too. I do the good amount of housework. I can't handle any more than that. Without thinking, I shouted and then snapped out of it. But it seemed I had stepped on a landmine already. My mother-in-law was livid. Why do you always make me so angry? I didn't mean to. I've had enough of being bossed around by my daughter-in-law. Just disappear. That's when my anger turned into resignation. Ah, it's pointless to deal with them anymore. I realized it in an instant. I understand. After saying that, I began packing my things. My mother-in-law watched me satisfied the whole time. Since a nearby business hotel was available, I stayed there for a few days and submitted a divorce application with the court. That's how I was finally freed from the curse of those two. After staying at the hotel, I rented an apartment near the land where I want to eventually open a store. It was about three weeks after leaving my Indo's home when one day. My ex-husband Alex called me out of frustration. He immediately started yelling at me. Enough already! You are such a burden. How long do you think you can keep wandering around like this? What's the matter all of a sudden? Where are you now? It's none of your business. I don't have to tell you where I am. What? Don't mess with me. Even if you are useless. You are still my wife, so hurry up and come back instead of fooling around. It seemed like he didn't realize that I had already filed for divorce. I tried desperately to hold back the laughter, welling up inside me, and calmly replied, "Excuse me, I'm already divorced, so I'm single, you know." Huh? What are you talking about? <laughs> If you don't believe me. Go to the government office to confirm it. My divorce application was properly accepted. Come on, you're joking, right? Then we heard my mother-in-law's voice as she listened in on our conversation. Beth, come back soon. If you do, I'll forgive you now. What? Forgive me? You say? Yes, I'll forgive everything. Even when you left on your own and made impolite remarks, so just come back quickly. What are you talking about? I have no regrets. In fact, I feel relieved that I finally got away from the bullying mother-in-law and jobless husband. Jobless husband? Are you talking about Alex? He goes to work every day. No, he has not. He was hiding the fact that he got fired from you. You were the only one who didn't know about that. After he became unemployed, I supported your family for more than a half a year. Th then, please come back now. Aren't you worried about me? What? I already told you that I don't want to have anything to do with you, scambags. Beth, please. Calm down, and let's talk things out. There's nothing left to talk about. Even if we talked, nothing would be resolved. I am tired of being manipulated by you too. I regret not doing this sooner, you know. Well then, goodbye. Wait, Beth, please help me. Without listening to the end, I threw my smartphone onto the bed. Ended a fist bump. Yes, 
it was finally all over. Now I can move forward without any regrets. As expected, they apparently met a terrible end later on. My mother-in-law blamed Alex for being fired, and Alex blamed my mother-in-law for giving him the reason to kick me out. A fight between the two of them began. In the end, Alex left home and found a job at a low-paying factory where he could live in. My mother-in-law was forced to live a lonely life on her pension, and their lives completely changed. As for me, I'm preparing to open a physical store for my handmade shop. When things settle down, I will go see my parents at home. Don't worry, I'm definitely happy now. I won't take this happiness for granted, and will focus on the present moment. That's what I decided in my heart.